Mike Fisher with Richie Witt, and uh, we've been doing this long enough now covering the NFL. We can tell you the answer to your question. So what are you guys going to do now that this season's over? We cover the team when there were no face masks. Or did we? Right, that, that, face that's masks? how long we've been around. Uh, and, of course, the, the answer is now that the season's over, the season's just beginning. Yeah, the season's not over. It's just a different phase of on-season. There's no off-season. Uh, one of the big phases that goes on now, this is, this is Cowboys, Washington, Atlanta, Houston, the Rams, even the Rams – uh, in the Super Bowl is team building. And I think there's some people... It better be. That, yeah. Uh, uh, and I think there's some observers, certainly media, they almost like the team building part better than they like the winning. Um, how, how much should we all focus as NFL fans on, okay, this next piece, this next piece, versus saying, okay, now wait a minute now, the Rams already kind of built something pretty special. Yeah. Uh, let's give them credit. The Cowboys arguably built something almost special. You know, the really good teams enjoy their wins for 24 hours and then start thinking about how we're going to win the next game, the next game, the next game. The Rams have one more game, but I guarantee you they've got an entire department or departments dedicated to the next regular season game. Yeah. The, the draft, the salary cap, there's crunching. There's, Advanced there's, scouts. Oh, so, it's, yeah. You know, there's not, a, there's not a delineation now between – this season and next season, it's just season. Right. And there's just some different segments of it. And, yeah, every good team is already working on 2022. Yeah, Stephen Jones, uh, Cowboys CEO, will tell you it's a 365-day-a-year job. We will point out gently that it <laughs> almost is, except every year the Joneses on spring break take the kids and go off to Cabo. Yeah, I kinda, I need that 365-day-a-year uh, job. Right? Yeah, yeah. To go to Cabo, and and when I want to go to dinner in Dallas, I get my helicopter and fly down there. But yeah, yeah, they don't think they're not working because they're. It's in true, Cabo. and uh, and again, and on Jerry's yacht, he can, he does a lot of work from his yacht. There's no question. What what I used to say to Stephen is, I mean, yeah, you're you're on the beach, and yeah, you have a laptop, and yeah, you have a phone, yeah. and yeah, Will McClay's here in this building running it, yeah. but you are on the beach. It, it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> now I will let's say this in fairness. It just, Again, yeah. around the NFL, every every owner and every general manager and every coach yes. takes a break. Yes. Uh, maybe the Cowboys are lucky that when they're when the Joneses take their break during spring break, which is the beginning of the NFL year, it's the beginning of the season, though. that Will McClay is <laughs> here working. The Cowboys are lucky enough, fortunate enough, and talented enough to make their office wherever they want it to be: yacht, beach. Spring break, wherever they want. Now, they can have a lot more muscle behind their argument if they'd have been the conference championship in 27 years. The uh, NFC East competition, if they get a quarterback for the Cowboys, might very well be the Washington Commanders. Commanders. Uh, there's buzz uh, uh, from people in the know in Washington that Russell Wilson, the Seattle Seahawks, disgruntled quarterback there. Yeah. He's not disgruntled when the cameras are on. He's just disgruntled when they're off. Well, he knows how to play the game. He, no he's question. He's very slick about it. Very much yeah. so. Uh, that privately, he's kind of saying, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind Washington. What do you think of that fit? Which is very, very soft. He should say that about every team, right? Yeah. When his agent goes, what do you think? Well, I wouldn't mind maybe that team so much. Uh, I, if I'm a Cowboys fan, I hate that fit because yeah. I think he's. I think they have weapons with McLaurin and with Curtis Samuel. And I, I still think Ron Rivera is a really good coach. They have a good running Antonio game. Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson with a good running game. And their defense had an off year. I, injuries, you know, stuff happens. But when they're when they're good, as we saw in 2020, they're really good at, at a playmaking quarterback. All the great things that Taylor Haneke does, he does. But all the bad things Haneke does, he doesn't. Russell Wilson would scare the heck out of NFC, NFC uh, East competition. I, let's look at this like we're the NFC East, but also Washington. Let's pretend we're Washington. You got a crack at, and again, we don't know the details of, of the cost and the rest. You got a crack at a 38 year old Aaron Rodgers, a 33 year old Russell Wilson, who's not as good as Aaron Rodgers, or a 20, I think he's 25, Deshaun Watson, who's got his baggage. Boy, there's, there's baggage, baggage, and Russell Wilson, <laughs> other, than, other than this contract negotiation, no baggage. Right. A big Boy Scout. Yeah. And elite. Pro player, Super Bowl winner. Yep. Rodgers is going to bring media attention, and he's going to bring Rodgers. I mean, yeah. he's he's a soap opera to himself. Deshaun Watson leads the league in NFL in passing, but we're talking about he's got he's got personality baggage and criminal baggage. He brings. Give me Russell Wilson all day. All right, to Houston and Deshaun Watson. The minute that he says, "Fine, I'll settle," 
these 22 cases. Which he will. There's a trade. Agreed. They're in it. Yeah. And there's, and there's what, 31 teams going, you know, what, what, when's he ready? Everybody's got to be interested in him. He's a, he's a, he's a unique talent in this league. He led the league in, in passing. He can make plays with his, with his legs as well as his, with his arm. And I, as a football player, there's no NFL team that shouldn't be interested in him. Right. Now, if you already have uh, Justin Herbert, you're, you're not going there. Right. But, but your point is, I, I want, I want my eye on that. Absolutely. I want, I want to see what's going on over there. Yeah. Uh, and Houston needs to get this done with, in some level of expediency because uh, this has been two years now of been, being as bad as you can be. And they need those yeah. picks, and they need those picks now, and they need to hit on those picks. And they might end up with five premium picks or so with a Deshaun Watson trade. Let's get it done. And we talk about, you know, there's, there's no off-season, there's no on-season. With Houston, it feels like they're kind of in purgatory. Until Deshaun Watson, the situation works itself out. They trade, they know what they're getting in assets. They're kind of stuck because they, you know, what are they going to get for him? How many picks? What direction do they go? That, that's the number one thing that's holding them back, and you know, that's got to be done immediately. Speaking of quarterbacks, Matt Ryan puts the Falcons in a sort of limbo now. Matt Ryan's the best quarterback in the NFC South. Yes. 37 years old, he takes a snap next year. But because Tom Brady's out and who knows what Carolina does with Sam Darnold and Sean Payton and Drew Brees are both gone from the Saints, Matt Ryan's like, look at me. Okay, on a Falcons team that to the final brink of the season was still almost kind of in playoff contention. Yeah. And therefore, the Falcons are what? Dreaming. I mean, again, they, they get better by subtraction. Sean Payton leaves. Sean Payton owned the Falcons forever. Uh, Tom Brady owned the Falcons. 10-0, and 0, lifetime. 10-0, and 0, and scored 30 points every time he suited up with Tampa. So all of a sudden, the Falcons are like, we've done nothing. Shh, don't tell anybody, but we're a lot better. A lot better than we were last year. They face, uh, the Falcons do, the same exact situation they did last year with Matt Ryan and then draft his heir or talent around him in picks. Now here we are again. Yeah. If you draft Matt Ryan's heir, um, not that that's a bad Malik Willis. Not that that's a bad idea, right. but you won't be good. You won't be Matt Ryan's Falcons won't be good again this year. Tough tough spot for them. It's really they have to make that decision in house. What do you think? It's not just a let's let that organically work out. You got to decide: Are we riding Matt Ryan for two more years? If so, let's get pieces around him. If you think he this could be his last snap, you know, every time he takes the field, we got to have his backup in place. And that's a that's an organizational. Crossroads that they're at. On the NFL and the Falcons, Richie Witt, Mike Fisher out.